Hello students, in this video we'll see two examples of proving vector and dyadic tensor identities using the standard operations. Let's consider two vectors, V and W, together with the dyadic tensor, together with tau bar bar, a dyadic tensor. The first thing I want to do is I want to simplify, our first objective is let's simplify this expression over here, which is going to be tau bar bar dot v. And if I do tau bar bar dot v, that's going to turn into a vector. Dyadic tensor dot a vector, it's a one contraction, so it's going to contract into a vector. And I'm going to dot that vector with w over here, right? And so in other words, this whole thing is going to be a scalar quantity, right? So this is going to be a scalar quantity. But this will help us get used to our contracting operators, right? So let's do it. So tau is going to be what? So let's write this out sort of very carefully. It's going to be the sum over i and j, over i and j for tau, tau i j, and then delta i hat, delta j hat. I'm going to dot that with v, which is going to be the sum over k, vk, delta k hat, like that. That's the innermost bracket over there. And then one more index for w, right? I'm going to dot that with the sum over l, of WL delta L hat. Okay, so that's a lot to unpack, so let's do it carefully over here, right? Let's focus on this inner bracket over here first, right? The inner bracket is going to simplify to what? The inner bracket is going to be the sum over I, J, and K. There's going to be three sums to do over here. I'm going to have a tau IJ, tau IJ, and I'm going to have a VK, and then I'm going to have a delta I hat. Then I'm going to have a delta J, delta K, that's a delta JK, delta JK, that's a Kronecker symbol, right? And then we're going to dot this again with the sum over L of WL delta L hat, like so. Okay, excellent. And so now let's continue on over here. Well, what does this force over here? So this over here, this delta J, just delta KK, that forces K to be equal to J, right? So everywhere we see a, I can get rid of either J or K, let's choose actually just to get rid of K, and this will turn into a tau IJ, and then a V what? Then a VJ over here, okay? Excellent. And then that is just still a delta i. So this whole thing over here is going to simplify to what? And this is going to simplify just to the sum over i and j, sum over i and j, of tau ij, tau ij, then a vj, then a delta i hat. Then we're going to dot this with the sum over l, and then we're going to have a wl, and then a delta l hat. Now, when I dot these things, I'm going to get a delta I L, right? So the effect of this is going to replace I with L, right? So in other words, all the L's go away and turns into I's, right? So this is going to be the sum over I and J. I'm going to have a tau I J. And then I'm going to have a V I, V I, like that. And then I'm going to have a W I over here, W I, like that. Okay? Excellent. And now this is the exact this is the scalar expression. Now I have to identify this with another operation we know. Well, we know that if I was to do so, for example, if we did a vi wj wj vi, we see that this is exactly equal to the dyadic tensor tau double dot double uh, bar, and then double dot product with this outer product over here. The outer product is going to be what? The outer product is going to be v with w, and that's going to be itself a dyadic tensor over here. This is the outer product of V and W. Okay, so that's the dyadic tensor itself. So we've proven this dyadic tensor identity that this expression over here, tau dot V dot W, is the same thing as tau double dot product, the outer product of V and W. Excellent, so that's our first sort of identity we get over here. And this one comes in play a lot when you're doing decompositions in the Euler equations or Navier-Stokes equations. We're looking at this, 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 um, this uh, the, co the covariant derivative, and you're looking at the uh, the velocity term, which basically has the form of this double dot product over here. Okay, excellent. Let's do another example. Here's the second example. Let's simplify. Simplify what? I'm going to do tau cross v cross w like that. Okay. So I'm going to do the cross, I'm going to, instead of doing the dot product relationships, now I'm going to do the cross product relationships. Now, of course, V cross W is a vector, and a dyadic, ten, dyadic tensor cross a vector is going to be a dyadic tensor. So we're going to figure out what this is going to look like over here, right? So let's do it. All right, so I'm going to write this out carefully. This is going to be the sum over I and J, I and J. 
And then there's going to be a tau ij, tau ij, and then a delta i hat, delta j hat. And then the cross product over here, I'm going to have to cross this with what? I'm going to have to cross this expression over here with, now I have to have three terms, I have to have a total of, um, a total of three things over here, right? I'm going to say k and then l and then m, and then we're going to have a epsilon k l m. I'll have a v k. I'll have a w a w l. W l, and then a delta. Uh, uh, which do I have? What am I missing over here? So I have a v k, a w l, and a delta m hat. Perfect. Now, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, write the, all these things down and get one more index over here. So when I do this V delta J and then delta M, that's going to give me one more summation over here. So let's do that next. So it's going to be the sum. We have six terms in our sum over here. The sum I, J, and then K, L, M, and N. So six things in our sum over here. Eventually, that's why we're going to develop this Einstein notation so I don't have to keep writing all these sums, right? And then we have a tau ij, tau ij. We're going to have a vkwl, vkwl, okay? And then we're going to have a what? Then we're going to have a, we have my epsilon klm. And then we're going to have what? Then we're going to have a delta j cross delta m. That's going to give me an epsilon. And then it's going to give me a jm, j, and then an m. And then it's something else. Let's call it n. Like that. And then, then what will we get over here? Then we're going to have a total of a delta i hat, delta i hat from this term over here. And then we'll have a what? A delta n hat. Like so. Contacting all these things. And now I'd like to use the match mismatch identity, right? So what I'm going to do over here is I am going to flip two of these indices to put the m in the last slot over here. Okay? So we put the m in the last slot. That will induce a negative sign. So I'm going to do negative over here, then epsilon, and then J and M. And now I can use match mismatch because the M is in the last entry over here, right? So by match mismatch, I'm going to get rid of my M summation. So this is going to be negative the sum. I sum over I. I sum over J. I sum over K. I sum over L. I'm not summing over M anymore because I'm going to use match mismatch. And then I sum over N over here, great? And I have a tau IJ. I have a VK. I have a WL, and then what are my delta terms going to be? I'm going to have a delta, delta KJ, KJ, I match delta LN, LN, minus I mismatch, I'm going to have a delta KN, delta, I have a delta KN and a delta LJ. Like that, that's my mass mismatch identity. And then a delta I, delta N, delta I hat, delta N hat, excellent. Okay, so now what are we going to do over here? So in this first sum over here, let's look at this first expression we're going to get. Over here, we're going to do k equals j, and we're going to do l equals n, okay? So let's focus on that first term over here in the sum. And actually, we're going to do, um, let's actually do this one first as a negative sign, right? So over here, we're going to do k equals n, so I'm going to sum over k, and then l equals j, l equals j, right? So this first sum over here is going to be the sum. I still have my i. I still have my J, I still have my I and my J, and then my K and is now turned, my N is going to be turned into K over here. So I keep my K like that. And I don't need L and N anymore because I have my delta functions over here, right? And so I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a tau I, J, beautiful. Then a VK, that's a VN, VN. And then a WL, that's a WJ, WJ like that. And then what? And then we're going to have a what? A delta i, delta i, hat. And what's this n turn? Uh, uh, that's going to be a k. This n is really a k over here, right? So that's really going to be a k. So again, remember the n is equal to k. So let's put that in there. It's going to be a v, k, like that. Delta i, and then delta n is delta k. Delta k hat over there. That's the positive term. And then minus the sum. Let's look over here. So now I have a. Uh, I have an I, J, uh, my K and my L are fixed now, so I'm going to get rid of my K, I'm going to get rid of my K, and I'm going to get rid of my N, so I'm going to have an I, J, and L, so I, J, and L over here, right? And then we're going to have a delta tau I, J, and then a V, K, that's a V, J, V, J over here. 
and then what? And then a WL, which is W what? That's so a WL over here, beautiful. And then a delta I and delta N. Delta L, because L is equal to N over here, L. Beautiful. Now, what is this expression over here? This expression over here is exactly equal to what? Well, this, of course, is just the single dot product of tau with what? Of tau with W. So this is really going to be tau bar bar single dot product W vector in what direction? In the direction of VK, VK delta K. So that's in the direction of the vector V. Then minus tau bar bar with what? Hit with V. Hit with V. In what direction? In the direction of WL delta L, so it's in the direction of W over here, right? So in other words, we've just proven that tau cross V cross W is the same thing as tau single dot W in the direction of V minus tau single dot V in the direction of W, right? Now that is a vector over here. That's a vector. That's a vector. That's a vector. So this gives me a dyadic tensor because these are outer products over here. So these products over here are outer products. And I get, yeah, again, a dyadic tensor. I get this beautiful relationship that sort of is exactly similar to when I do like something like the divergence of the curl of the, of the cross product of A and B, or I do the curl of the divergence of a certain sort of, uh, of the vector times an operator in divergence form, right? So in other words, I'm really sort of building up a, a toolbox by which I can make calculations with curls and divergences easily using these tricks from vector calculus and using these contraction arguments, but very carefully managing your indices and using identities like the match mismatch identity or the two delta identity which are very very important in vector and tensor analysis thank you very much